Drakenheim is no more. Struck by a falling star, the city bathed in eldritch fire on that woeful eve. The tumultuous aftermath brought chaos, families torn asunder, and a kingdom shattered. Fifteen years later, monsters stalked the haunted streets of Drakenheim. Caught amidst rival factions struggling to rule the rubble, three unlikely partners venture forth into the crumbling city in search of riches, renown, and revenge. Good evening and welcome to Drakenheim. This is our weekly Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition live game with the Dungeon Dudes. That's me, Monty Martin, the Dungeon Master. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin and I'll be playing Sebastian Crow, the Half-Elf Shadow Sorcerer. And we're joined today by our good friends. Jill Denitis playing Veo Senya, the Tabaxi Gloom Stalker Ranger Rogue. And Joe O'Gorman playing Pluto Jackson, the Human Battle Master. Tonight's episode of Dungeons of Drakenheim is sponsored by Skull Splitter Dice. They've sent us a fantastic collection of their premium metal dice to use in our game tonight, including these awesome gold and burnished gold dice that I have been uh, rolling myself. And I think, upon reflection, these are lovely average dice which is the best that you can ask for in dice i think you neither want a die that is, that rolls too well nor too poorly you really want to count on the odds so you're going to keep using the ones that gave you a bunch of critical misses last oh week. no i'm gonna I, 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 i'll go to the ones that are rolling all the crits um please you can pick up a set of these dice for yourself by heading over to skullsplitterdice.com and using the discount code ddudes at checkout to save 15 percent off your order skullsplitter dice is also running an awesome kickstarter right now for their yeah. limited edition plastic dice so mm -hmm. be sure to check them out on kickstarter as well if you want to get a big big addition to your dice collection uh, as we know us D, D nerds can never have enough dice never when last we left our heroes, they had split the party. <laughs> A bold move, Cotton. Let's see how it pans out. Indeed. Hot on pur in pursuit of Oscar Yorin, the renegade wizard with whom they had left Lenore von Kessel, the former queen of Drakenheim, who is now absconded with her and seemingly come into the f fortress barracks of the Hooded Lanterns at Shepherd's Gate. Where Oscar and the Queen are within the fortress, whether or not the Hooded Lanterns even know what is going on, our heroes cannot say. However, after hopping over the walls of Drakenheim to get into the city, they have now come round the back of this barracks where they are fragmented into three groups veo having climbed up the latrine chute into one of the guard towers sebastian having lost all of his hair in a wild magic surge donning the disguise of cornelius mortimer bigsby a the second potions inventor has managed to get in the front get in the gate and is now in the other privy in the keep, leaving Pluto Jackson alone in the ruins right in front of the gate, where he has thrown a strange vial collected from the mirror dimension of Laneth Eventide. You now stand in the fortress barracks of the Hooded Lanterns at Shepherd's Gate. It is a large keep that abuts Shepherd's Gate itself. So the gatehouse to the city, on the north tower of the gatehouse, there is a large keep built onto that itself. Then coming out from the keep is an internal wall, not quite as thick or as tall as the walls of the city proper, which encircles a training yard, a barracks, a lodge, and the stables that the Hooded Lanterns use. There are three smaller watchtowers 
on this wall, one of them connecting to the main city wall itself, and then a set of gates leading into the training yard. But then there's a smaller port gate as well, just off Shepherd's Gate. We have a cute little map that I whipped up uh, that should be going up right over here. <laughs> yeah. Just so that everyone uh, following along can get a little bit of an idea of what our map looks like. Yeah, I think uh, over over <laughs> over the heads. So the this should give you a bit of an idea of what you're looking at as far as the layout of the keep. Right now, Sebastian, you are in that small northernmost tower on the keep. Or sorry, not the northernmost, the westernmost because this this map Oh, the big one? Nor the little map that I've given you. West oh. is the top edge of the map. North mm. is then the right edge of the map. Got it. Yep. So the westernmost small tower that's part of the keep, that's where the privy that Sebastian is in is. Whereas Veo is on the tower directly opposite it on the gate, gate side. So just to the, e the easternmost the southeast tower you would call it of the keep or of the wall of the walls okay. themselves oh. yeah now the whole area <clears throat> all of the battlements and the towers the hooded lanterns have installed their own hoardings all along the outer edge so you can imagine this fortress that would have once been a decent fortification inside the city, but then the Hooded Lanterns have taken all this time to add additional wooden fortifications over top of everything that give the whole top edge of the battlements and the towers a little bit of a ramshackle appearance. The Hooded Lanterns have set up several large crossbow emplacements and sort of pillboxes on top of all of the tower so that they can protect it from the inside whereas originally the barracks would have allowed them access and still does allow them access to control shepherd's gate itself outside of the city walls proper to the west of shepherd's gate the hooded lanterns actually have a small wooden palisade that they <laughs> built around the gate as well to give an extra layer of external defense to the whole thing and so sebastian when you came in through the training yard on the north edge of the keep are where the doorways that lead into the keep proper are located atop a set of stairs. And in the training yard, you saw Oscar Yoren's wagon abandoned beside the stables. There was no one pulling it or, or anything like that as you came in. And so, Sebastian, you are inside the keep in one of the privies. Veo, you are in one of the watchtowers, also in one of the privies. <laughs> But Paluto, <coughs> you are hiding in one of the buildings overlooking the street between the gate, the, the side street that comes off Shepherd's Way, overlooking the gate where you've just thrown this vial of the black liquid that you harvested from the mirror. Yeah, I found it. How's Paluto doing right now? He's having a mild to severe panic attack. <laughs> um. Pluto's even like he watched Veo scurry off and I was really confident when you left. I was like, yeah, this is a good idea. And then the loneliness started to creep in and now it's like, like what if they never come back? What if I'm alone in the city with no one <laughs> and I can't get out? Aww. Like I can, I can, I can dimension door away from my problems all I want, <laughs> but, but, I can never outrun <laughs> that I left you here. Oh my gosh. Uh, uh, my heart's beating. I also went to the bathroom. Just not. <laughs> I didn't find a place. <laughs> but I did find a way to go to the bathroom. I, 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 I'm watching the. I threw the vial because I'm like, mm -hmm. I need to create a panic. I feel like I do well in panic. Like if there's a place on fire or there's a bunch of things running around, I do better in those situations. I like to think on my feet. Okay. Cha. So 
I threw the vial and I'm watching. I'm I'm watching it like. You watch as the vial shatters in the street, and the liquid inside spills out across the cobblestones. And in the low rain, it begins to bubble and steam. Ooh. And before the gate, there are a pair of hooded lanterns. A tall, broad-shouldered half-orc carrying a massive longbow and a smaller human man, both of them wearing their helmets and the livery of the hooded lanterns. And they see this. They see the shat- the glass shatter, but they don't seem to see where it comes from. And the man turns and says, Gorg, I'm going to take a look. Keep an eye out. And Gorg, the half-orc, turns to him and says, Be careful, Sten. That looks strange. Did you see where it came from? No. Did you? Pop back. No. (laughs) Sten, the human man, shoulders his crossbow and walks towards where the vial shattered seeing the steaming and bubbling liquid in front of him. And he kneels down and he calls over the large mastiff that he had beside him. He says, come boy, sniff it out. And the dog comes towards the black bubbling liquid. And as it gets close, It growls and then starts whining and runs back towards the gate. Sten says, blasted hound. And he reaches down with a one taking one of his arrows and he pokes the liquid and pulls some of it up onto the arrow. And as he does so, he looks at it, pulls it close to his face to examine it, and suddenly the liquid stretches out and splatters into his face. (laughs) And there is a hissing, burning sound as Sten screams, reaches with his other hand towards the liquid, trying to pull it off of his face, but the liquid is expanding and it bubbles over his hand and is beginning to burn. The bubbling, hissing steam rising off of it as it begins to envelop around his face and over his hands. He drops the arrow and Gorg, the half orc companion, starts calling out to him and turns to see as Sten turns around to face him part of his face is dissolving away revealing his skull and the bones of his hand as this liquid is enveloping across his entire body beginning to droop down across of his body and he starts staggering forward as the black liquid continues to expand across all of his form covering him over and he stumbles forward into the puddle in front of him getting the liquid on his knees and hands and continues to fall into it as this liquid expands and grows, dissolving, slowly Sad. dissolving him. And his screams just resound around the entire area. Um, I was carrying that in my pocket. <laughs> like just, I don't, I don't even know if the cork was on the whole way. <laughs> like the whole time, just running around. Jeez. I'm going to I'm going to pretend like I didn't see all that. I did. <laughs> but I just to try to like push it out of my mind like nope, nope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put the drift globe down on the ground in this room. I'm not going to turn it on yet and I'm going to run out the back door pretending like I didn't see it. It's not illegal. <laughs> <laughs> whoop, 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 whoop. Okay. Clunk, clunk, clunk. You run out the back door 
In what direction? Um, away from the... Because I'm going to try to go to another building. Okay. And my plan is, is that I'm going to turn on the drift globe, just the light, as like another distraction. If if I get... But seen. you left the drift globe in the building that you were in. Yeah. You need to be holding it to turn it on. Then I'm going to carry it with me. Okay. <laughs> then I'm just going to leave that room. I'm going to find a new vantage point. Okay. As you move to another building through the back alleys, you can hear the general commotion of the hooded lanterns calling out. You can hear voices saying, it's Stan, something, he's in trouble. Quickly get the medics, get the medics. And there's a horn blare that goes out for distress. As several other hooded lanterns begin running out towards Sten. And as you come into the next building and look back out again, you can see that now uh, Gorg is out there saying, Don't touch him! Don't touch him! It'll spread! It'll spread! And so there's a group of about half a dozen hooded lanterns standing out the front, surveying the screaming and writhing form of Sten, unsure of what to do as an alarm bell sounds inside the barracks proper. With that, <laughs> go over to Veo. Okay. I'm sorry, Stan. <laughs> Veo, you hear the screams of this general commotion of someone saying, It's Stan! It's Stan! And this is just shortly after the other Hooded Lantern had knocked on the privy door and you'd given the excuse that you had to, you'd had the runs. <laughs> and you hear him s say, it sounds like there's trouble. As soon as you're cleaned up, you better get down to the training yard. And you hear the, the steps rushing down the stairs. Do I hear it with just the one guy or do I hear two? Just one. Mm. Okay. Um, I unlock the door. Okay. I peek out to see what I can see around. It is the guard room, as before. The spiral stairs leading up and down, with doors leading out onto the battlements. Mm. The room is empty of anyone else, though. There are just a few playing cards on the table, some mugs of liquid, and a half-eaten loaf of bread. I go up to the table. I take the loaf of bread. <laughs> <laughs> And say, that'll be a good snack for later. And I want to try to sneak up the stairs again. Back up the stairs. Back up the stairs. Okay. You head back up the stairs to the very top of the tower of the south wa of the southeast watchtower. As you head up the stairs, give me a perception check. Well, you can hear someone on the top of the battlements is ringing the alarm bell. Is there a, a door that leads? It's a I trap door. Yeah. Trap door. Yeah. Um, I want to push up the trap door mm -hmm. as slowly as I can, just so I get a peek. So what you can see nice. here is the top of the t watchtower is a roofed battlement. So there are the crenellations of the ca of the castle wall, and then they built a conical roof on top of it, which the Hooded Lanterns have reinforced. And hanging in the middle is a large bell that one of the men is, that one of the Hooded Lanterns is there ringing it, and you can hear the ringing sounding out. Do I know the man? Do you know this Hooded Lantern? You're looking at his feet. Mm, okay. Yeah. Can't really see him. Um, okay. I sneak back down and I start to make my way down the stairs mm -hmm. and I keep going down. Okay. But again, I'm kind of cautiously kind of watching around to see if there's anybody coming. Um, I'm going to take it pretty slow. Okay. It's a spiral staircase that heads down the tower. So you're now at the guard room level. How far down do you want to go? I want to continue to go down 
again, kind of slowly, at least one kind of round. Okay. Um, the the way the tower is built, yeah. the staircase goes to the very top, and then as the staircase goes up, there are arrow slits facing the outside. Mm -hmm. So as you go out, you can kind of take a, see a glance of what's happening out side mm -hmm. through one of the arrow slits but the only actual rooms in the tower are the guard room level the storage room at the very bottom and then the bell tower at the very, very top everything else is just a staircase that is then joined by th that has arrow slits to shoot out and like there's small kind of um sharpshooter spots along the staircase but there's no actual rooms okay so how far down is it to the storage room like how many flights of stairs there's no flights of stairs because it's a continuous Sorry. spiral staircase. Yeah. It basically goes twenty. It goes thirty feet up to the guard room level, and then another twenty feet up to the so watchtower feet, level. Thirty feet yeah. to go down. Yeah. Okay, I'll take. Yeah, the whole tower itself is sixty feet high. I take the thirty feet down, and I want to sneak into the storage room again, just to mm -hmm. kind of get in the door. It's a small storage room with several barrels of provisions, weapons, ammunition, and a singular door leading out into the training yard. Oh, okay. Um, and that's how the, this tower is accessed. I go over to the door with the training room, or the, the training area. Uh, is there any holes in the doors that I can see, or do I have to open the door to see what's going on? No, it's it's an iron-bound strong door. Mm -hmm. um, from your recollections of the way these doors are, the doors themselves are at the top of a 10-foot high staircase. Mm -hmm. So they're not quite on the ground level, so the door opens up, and you can overlook the entire training yard when the door opens up. Is there anything in the room that's like uniforms? Make an investigation check. 14. Yes, there is a suit of leather armor and an extra hooded lantern's cloak and standard weaponry. There's enough gear here that you could put on a complete outfit as a hooded lantern. I do so. I okay. take it on. I, I put it on, um, and I take a, a, like a crossbow or mm -hmm. do they have a longbow in there? They have longbows and crossbows, and they have a very standardized set of weaponry. So they have short swords that they carry. They carry spears, short swords, crossbows, longbows, and they're they have their own quivers of arrows and stud leather armor. If you want to change over, it'll take you probably about two or three minutes to to put on the. Yeah. The armor. And I'll change over. Okay. Yeah. Get myself in my own disguise. <laughs> it's not really much of a disguise, but but I also want to like if there's something that I can put over like my face, then I'd. Prefer As befit the, befits their names, the hooded lanterns do have hoods that they draw. Okay. They they can draw up. They Double also hood. they also do have, um, they also do have helmets that they wear. They're kind of a coiffed helmet or a standard standard helmet that you could put on that would hide your ears for instance yeah that's what i don't want to yeah. do cover my ears and somewhat cover my face with like a scarf of some sort or oh, i already have a scarf so i could probably put it on yeah okay cool make a mascot of a human <laughs> like me oh is that <laughs> <laughs> no too much too much, <laughs> too much. all right okay <laughs> Just, i thought there was no next? bad ideas okay. brainstorming uh i then want to open the door slightly to again survey what's going on in the yard okay in the training yard there is a general commotion of another half dozen hooded lanterns that it seems like there were probably about a dozen hooded lanterns engaged in training exercises at this in this moment but they've all stopped to respond to what's just happened and there's a few people that are running towards the keep a few people running towards the gatehouses and you can see now quite clearly looking out from the training yard that there is at least that there's at least one hooded lantern at the top of all of the watchtowers looking out in some cases there's two and there's at least one or two hooded lanterns on all the walls mm -hmm. and all of them are now on high alert okay um i want to kind of camp here for a moment as long as i can until i guess somebody comes down from the guard tower um, to see if I see Cornelius running around in all this ruckus. Okay, with that, we move over to Sebastian, a.k.a. Cornelius. You too in a privy. 
as you hear the shouting coming out from the the yard of this of so, something's going on you can hear all the bell bells ringing and you can um and you hear shouts from within saying quickly notify the commander something strange has happened out the front is there a window in this room at all in the privies yeah there are no windows in the privies okay privacy i suppose <laughs> Um, okay. What bathroom have you been in? My bathroom has a window. <laughs> Actually, I know it doesn't. <laughs> Big All window. Like, like windows. Big blinds. Anyway, um, Sebastian just kind of is pacing back and forth. Does he hear the guard who was watching over him in, in, this, uh, in the privy? Did they leave? Or are they still, do I hear like them walk away? Or are they still standing guard? Make a perception check. You have no idea. You can hear shouting and the movement of soldiers and and armor from within, but whether or not someone is still waiting outside of your privy, you you can't be certain. I take out my handy mirror. Is there like enough space under the door for me to kind of slide it? Just barely. Okay. So I slide the mirror under and I tilt it as much as I can to try to look down either end of the hall to see who's out there. The hallway is empty. I slowly open the door and kind of poke my head out and look around. No, Nobody's there? You are in the hall at the west side of the barracks in one of the smaller towers. This tower is built into the keep properly and you've gone up to get to this privy, you'd gone up a set of stairs from below, coming from the infirmary, which is also on the second level of the keep. You see in front of you, there's the doors that you just came through to get in here from, from the privy, and then there's another set of doors that lead out to a walkway that walks that crosses the great hall and goes to the infirmary. And then there's a set of stairs going, but also in front of you is a set of stairs going down to where the Great Hall is. And that set of stairs continues up. And you at least remember when you passed by that that staircase went down one more time as well. So it's like a central staircase in the middle of the keep. Well, I'm assuming the dungeons are down. So um, I step out. I look around. I make sure that my monocle is straightened. And my suit is tidy. <laughs> and I start walking with confidence down the stairs. Okay. You walk down the stairs. Um, and as you start heading down the staircase, there is a clatter from the staircase up above. Um, and... You can hear the the footsteps, heavier footsteps of at least one other person followed by a few others coming down the stairs behind you. And as you come down the stairs right behind you, you can hear a voice saying, is this some kind of his magic? Is he doing something out there? Is he trying to mess with us now? I should have just locked him up. What's happened to Sten? You hear the familiar voice of the Lord Commander as he's heading down the stairs. So Oscar's not locked up. Um, oh man, so I, am I, I'm just in a room in the keep right now. And he's no, you're on the stairwell and he's about to, and the Lord Commander's, you're on the stairwell going to the main level and the Lord Commander's like maybe one flight up above you. I start going down the stairs. Is there like any alcoves or anything, or am I just on this staircase? You're at the base of the stairs. Yeah. There's a door leading into the great hall. There's another door leading into the tower, and there is a statue of one of the patron saint of the hooded lanterns in front of you. So there's the doorway into the main hall, the stairs back up, the stairs down, and the and the door into the tower. I run up against the wall 
I crouch down into a little ball and I cast Minor Illusion to put a barrel around me. <laughs> and I just try to sit there and pretend that I am just a barrel. You're a barrel. <laughs> and I'm going to listen for more clues about where Oscar is as I'm a barrel. Okay. Put your feet poke out on the bottom and you follow the commander. <laughs> okay. As you turn yourself into a barrel, yes. uh, make an illusion of a barrel around you. You can hear the Lord Commander um, coming down the stairs, and he is talking with, it sounds like he might be talking with Ansem, and he says, Petra said that someone else came in as uh, uh, about an hour ago. We, we took them to the infirmary. I don't think that this this might have been one of theirs. It, it, he said he was a potion maker looking for Oscar Yorin as well. And the commander turns to Ansem and says, How did anyone know to look for Oscar Yorin here? I thought he said he came straight here after his after his manor was attacked. If word has already spilled out, this this Bigsby fellow that just showed up at our door. Could be an imposter. Could be one of the Queen's men. We need to find that person and lock them up right away and make sure that they are actually not a spy. We have too much of a sensitive situation right now to risk anyone else coming in. Why did we admit any guests into the building at this time? And Ansem replies, well, the other Hood of the Lanterns don't know who we've got here right now. The commander nods. I'm going to go check the situation out. Come with me. You, Ansem, go make sure Oscar Yorin's secure. I'm going to go check out and see what's happened to Sten. Oh my god. And with that, the Lord Commander heads out the doors, and Ansem heads down the stairs. I I can't move my minor illusion, can I? No. Okay. I look around. Are there any like other sets of clothing around? There's several other barrels that you've hidden up around. Yeah. These these appear to be barrels of supplies. I start so I I jump up and I start opening barrels, hoping to find a quick non Cornelius disguise. Hmm. Just anything that can make me look. Make like an I investigation check. Might belong here. Like a fancy hat. I got a twenty one. You look around. Um, you remember there's nothing in here that you could use really as a disguise. They're all provisions. But you do remember across the Great Hall, there were some servants' quarters and a kitchen. There might be something there. And the other tower that you were in as a privy did have some weapons and armor in it that maybe you could put on. There's no time for that. I need to follow Ansem. Um Upon looking in these barrels and deciding that there's nothing, I head down the stairs after Ansem. Okay. You head down the stairs into the understructure of the keep. You're in a long hallway. As you head down the stairs, make a stealth check. Are you ta you're tailing him? I'm so tailing him from as far away as possible, ready that if he even starts to turn around, I'm going to become a barrel again. <laughs> That's my plan. I'm, I'm a barrel. Just... <laughs> but yes, I'm, I'm tailing him from as far back You're as possible. You're just like ready to snap your yeah, fingers. I'm just like, uh, ah, barrel. Uh, ah, barrel. Um, so I'm going to make a stealth check. I get an eight. Cool. <laughs> you, keep, you keep saying barrel out loud. <laughs> you stumble on the stairs. And as you and head forward down the staircase and it comes into a hallway that has an iron gate that Ansem is opening up and as you step down the stairs he stops turns the key looks around and makes direct eye contact with you <laughs> you what are you doing here I pull out my wand and I point it at him and I yell flee 
and I cast <laughs> command. Okay. What's the saving throw DC? It is 15. Okay. <laughs> come on. Come on. Come on. I don't DC. think my bonus is high enough. I rolled an 11. Yeah, I I, I get a big old 11. Ooh, yes. Ooh. Okay. As you point the wand at it, a look of immediate horror surrounds Ansem's face. And he turns and runs past the the portcullis gate that he was opening up because he, he, he'd opened it and he's screaming <laughs> um, and you can see right behind him there is another room it looks like a guard room and there is this little old man wearing the hooded lantern's outfit and he's got a bunch of books in front of him and sets of handcuffs and manacles and, and he turns up and says oh young Ansem What's all the screaming about? <laughs> <laughs> and Anson's just like, ah! <laughs> screaming back, back at him. I, I, um, I walk. Is the portcullis still open? Yeah. So yeah. I walk through it and I turn to the little old hooded lantern, and I point my wand at him, and I say. Tell me where Oscar is, or else you're going to have the same, or else you're going to see what he's so afraid okay. of. Okay, how long does the command effect last? Um, that's a good question. <laughs> command, it lasts one round. Okay. So, Ansem runs back in, in into the room. Uh, he regains composure of himself. And as you're pointing the wand at the old, old man, Ansem comes to, draws his swords, and he points them at you and and says, you just stay right there. Whatever you just did to bewitch me, don't do it again. <laughs> Looking through your... Hmm. Hmm. He turns and he says... Old Dan, get one of those manacles. Petra should have done this right, right when you came in. And old Dan says, I thought he was supposed to be one of our guests, but all right, I'll just get you one of the good old sets here. All the cells are full with all those guys that came in with that old, that other guy though. I don't have anywhere to put them right now unless you want to throw them in with more of the other lot. I pull my wand out and I point it back at Ansem. I, um, you need to tell me where Oscar Yorn is. I have way more than the abilities to just cast that. I could blow you up with just a few words, Ansem. Make an intimidation check. Are you using your Sebastian voice while you say this? No. <laughs> <laughs> My good sir. Okay, say, it, say it again. With a few words if I so desire. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that is going to be... The most name? intimidating man in the, in, in the fort. 26. Okay. So intimidating. <laughs> so... It's the finale. He says... You're serious. I need to speak to Oscar Yorn immediately. It is of the utmost importance, especially with what's happening out there. So if you don't show him to me, I will blow up your head. <coughs> and it won't be a good look for you. He sheathes his sword. Keeps the other one high. Old Dan, put the manacles down. Give me the keys. And he takes the keys from old Dan. His sword still pointed at you. And he opens, there's a cell door with bars on the behi beside the desk at, with old Dan. Mm -hmm. And he opens the cell doors. And he says, come on. 
I don't stop facing him. <laughs> and he, so he opened a cell door and told me to go in. Mm-hmm. After you. Fine. He goes through the cell doors, and there is a small prison, a series of cells down here. As you come step into the cell block, there are three <laughs> large cells. In the cell immediately there, it is filled with five members of the of ostensibly of the Queen's men that have all been locked and manacled in one of the cells. But they are all huddling against the the far wall, uh, farthest away from the other cells. Because locked in the other two cells are about a dozen zombies and one massive ogre zombie. <laughs> and all of them are like grasping toward at the at the cell that the three queen's men are locked in and they're just sh- shivering and, and kind of in, in a cold shock there's another door at the end of the hallway before i go any further i turn to the old man the bookkeeper what was his name again old dan old dan <laughs> you better still be there when i get out or else i'm turning you into a newt Okay. Old Dan says, I don't mean no trouble now. Then you just stay in your seat. <laughs> so fun. Sir, continue escorting. Nice collection of zombies, by the way. Okay. <laughs> he leads you to the end of the hallway where there is a room marked it may have once been the torture chamber down here Ansem knocks on the door says Yorin you've got a visitor and a voice comes from within I'm busy what do you want it's Oscar Yorin Sir Oscar Yorn, I am Cornelius Mortimer Bigsby. I've traveled very far in search of you, and I'm here to rescue you. I don't need to be rescued. Go away. No. Anson looks at you. He doesn't want to talk to you. That's fine. I want to talk to him. I can't make him talk to you. You can (laughs) go in there. But I can't make him help you. You go in first. Anson opens the door. Inside is Oscar Yorin. And he's converted the torture chamber into his workshop. It is a macabre recollection reflection of his old workroom in Reed Manor. All of his things are here. He's used the he's using the racks to work on more creatures. And as he turns around to face you, you can see that he is noticeably paler than he was before. And almost it looks of his, as if he's grown three inches in height. And his eyes are glowing solid purple. Like yours. So are mine. <laughs> in, on the desk in front of him is an array of alchemical equipment and several pieces of delirium and several large vials, all of which appear to be filled with blood. Beside him is Gemma, assisting him with his work. With my wand still out and pointed at Ansem, I hold up the purple potion that I have. And I'm like, I found this amongst three dead adventurers in Drakenheim. Did you make this? 
Make a deception check. <laughs> I got a 12. He looks you up and down. I love it when the dice work out in your favor. (laughs) I did. I came for more. The three that you found that were dead, what did they look like? There was a, uh, a cat, a black cat with a crossbow. There was a uh, rather large-looking fella wore a suit of armor. Rather handsome. Yeah. But the most handsome of them all was the oh, red-headed sorcerer. <laughs> Where did you find them? They were down near one of the other gates that I used to get in here. Uh, there was near the crater, actually, I believe. There's a gate down there. I'm not familiar with the names of the places in this city, but... Uh, I found them dead. There were some ratlings feasting on them. <laughs> what do you want? More of these potions, and I came all this way just to find you. It seems that you've given up your lodgings at your previous place where I was sent to to buy I potions. have. I'm not in business anymore. I'm sorry. I know you've come to a lot of trouble probably to find me here. I don't know how you found me here. How did you know I was here? Well, word travels through Drakenheim. All the animals here seem to talk. How did you know I was here? Some rats spied you and your cart moving this du- direction. And I talked to Ratlings. Them. Ratlings yes. know who I am. Ratlings told you that Oscar Yorin made that potion. Ratlings told you that I came to the it's... Hooded Lantern's barracks. It seems that the Ratlings have communicated with those three dead adventurers and have learned a few things. So I just put together a few clues. I'm a little bit of an investigator, you see. (laughs) Make one more deception check. (laughs) 21. I get a 22. A natural 20. (sighs) That's a stretch. I don't believe you. And until you tell me how you found out that I was here, I've got no business with you. You, Hooded Lantern, I'm busy. Tell your commander that I'll have the next dose ready shortly. and Get out. Ansem says, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Yorin, there, there was something else that I was supposed to bring you down here for, but he, he ambushed me in the middle of the hallway. He, he showed up just earlier, and there's something's happened to one of our soldiers outside, and we thought you could take a look. And Oscar Yorin says, "This is madness." This With that, is we'll go back to Paluto. <laughs> Pluto the Lord Commander has come out the front gate Hello. and is surveying the muck of Sten Aww, <laughs> oh Sten. he's muck now <laughs> formerly known as Sten um, <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> I'm trying to stay hidden. Whereabouts was I compared to the gate? The main gate and then... The- Just at the intersection of where the path going to the gate, that's where every, all the commotion now is. Just right in front of that intersection on the on the street there. And where did I last see Veo? You saw Veo go up into the latrine tower. There's a little side door leading up beside it. So see there on the map there, there's that small path leading to the tower. There's a door, there's a gate there as a smaller side port gate um, that uh, 
that uh, the Hooded Lanterns also used to get into the fort. And now I see the Lord Commander. He's ha- he's mm-hmm. outside looking yep. at his melted friend. Yeah. Has the goo got worse? Yes. It is... The black ichor is coalescing in the street, spreading out into this blo- amorphous blob-like form, and the hooded lanterns are almost encircling it with spears and crossbows, like they don't know what to make of this this thing. Uh, I'm going to keep circling around, and I want to get closer to the west side, closer to Veo's mm-hmm. tower, the last place I saw her, and I'm just trying to keep eyes on the outside. Yeah. And I'm looking for anything, and I guess I can't see these guys yet. But As you circle around, you can see that a group of hooded lanterns have come down outside that side gate and they've left it open and and it appears to be unmanned as we go to Veo because as they go rush Veo you're back in the courtyard and there's a few other hooded lanterns that are heading out the side gate as you see the hooded lan- the the lord commander cross and the the Lord Commander just looks up, sees you in at the staircase uh, by the watchtower, points at you and says, You there, watch the port gate. The rest of you, with me. I shuffle over to the gate. Longbow in hand. Ready. <laughs> and when I look out, do I... I, I do a sweep. You scan and you see Paluto <laughs> clunk, in one of the clunk, bil- buildings clunk, along clunk. the side. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Pluto, you see a very strange looking hooded lantern in the gate along the, in the port gate. And you realize it's Veo. It's the, it's the walking on four, le- <laughs> four legs. I put my hood down and I have the helmet on and I just kind of pop it up so you can see my ears and I pop it down and put my hood back up and I motion with my hand. Come, come, come. I do the most <laughs> excited run. Whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> uh, ee, Veo. <laughs> and I'm gonna run across the the gate. Ho- they're distracted by mm-hmm. the goo, right? Yeah, the yeah. goo's got them. Yeah, you're able to run run across up to the port gate, uh, and Veil, you can hurry him into the base of the tower. Yep. Um, where there's another cloak. It's another <gasps> hooded lantern's cloak. Oh, I definitely pop it on and say, <laughs> "Put this on. Act natural." <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. More humble. More humble. Oh, jeez. Uh, sorry. Lanterns are very humble. I'll hunch over a little bit more. They think they know a lot, you know. So you have to. I'll carry the bow and stuff. I don't know if I know how to. No, Here, I can here's use. Here's a it. spear. No, no, no. You can take a spear. I can use them. Yeah, I, actually, I know how to use a bow. I can shoot a bow. Okay. If I need to. You've seen the Lord Commander how to head out to the front. The two of you are in the base of this tower, but reunited. <gasps> what will you do? I miss you guys so much. <laughs> we can always get another sorcerer. Kind of pat him on the back. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, we have to go find our sorcerer. I know, I know. And we got to find... Uh, is Oscar here? I don't know. I Honestly, I've been looking for our friend Cornelius uh, in order to see, but I really haven't seen much. But, you know, I, we could go around and say we, you know, lost the the new guest that we were supposed to be watching and see if anybody's seen him around. Yeah, yeah. I th- I turned Sten into muck, and now um, we might Sten. only buy some... Sten! Yeah. Sten was one of my good buddies. Oh. Um, he's still your buddy. He's just... He's got a face for radio. <laughs> <laughs> What's some, the radio? As some might say. He's more of a... He's more of a scholar. <laughs> now he's better behind the pen. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, we should probably <laughs> we might only buy us a bit more time. I threw some of that goo from the mirror what? at the gate. Yeah, I don't know I, what I was thinking. I was really panicking. Great plan, <laughs> except for the fact that it killed one of my friends. It but didn't kill him. He's still friend. <laughs> friends. Good distraction, though. Thanks. Good idea. All right. I like this cloak. This is great. It's good, eh? Good we color. have to go good find color on you. Cornelius. Now you have like. Blue and red and now green. Mm. Mm. And oh, we're wow. admiring ourselves. <laughs> oh yeah. All right. Let's um I mean 
Where's the last time you and saw? And I point it? to the area. Um, it, it's the keep has the the um, infirmary. I was like, they would have brought him probably somewhere in the keep if they trust him. If not, they probably would have brought him down to the dungeon. But I don't know where he could be. He could be on any floor. Have you been here before? Oh yeah. So you know kind of your way around? Kind of. I wasn't really welcome much here, but I've been here a couple times to celebrate some things with the, like, birthdays and, you know, Christmas and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> you know that the other buildings, the stables and the lodge, are not quite secure locate. Like, they're not places where the Hooded Lanterns keep anything valuable, aside, aside from their own personal effects. They're not fortified buildings like the keep is. So I know we're going to run into people when we go in the keep. It's, I mean, luckily we have these great disguises. Yes, <laughs> I'm super disguised. But don't ask, act like a Prince of Caspia or else they're going to know right away. that I'm probably not going to say many things. Okay. But we have to go quickly. Yes. I'll hide behind you because they could probably see my feline eyes. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, to the keep. Go, 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 go. Clunk, 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 clunk. And I'm like trying to stay behind you, but I'm like, come on. <laughs> okay. Slow. I'm going as You fast cross as the training ground towards the doors to the keep, heading up the steps where there are still two hooded lanterns in front of the keep doors, both with mastiffs. Uh-oh. Veo, you know these dogs, though, Uh-oh. and they are nice to you. Uh-oh. They don't bark as you pass by because they recognize you. I take a little bit of bread of that bread that I stole from earlier and I kind of pass it. I'm like, good boys, good cool. boys. Make an animal handling check. Ooh. 20. Cool. Animals love me. <laughs> As you pass <laughs> you pass by, the, the doors to the keep are open. They're just because there's so many hood lanterns now running out. And as they, as you pass by, a stretcher is coming out from the infirmary through the keep doors. And you can see a few of the hooded lanterns talking and they're like, I don't think this stretcher is going to be much good, but we'll bring it anyways. (laughs) (laughs) Poor muck. I'm calling him muck. It's not Stan anymore. And I, I just, as they pass, I'm like, yeah. He deserves a stretcher. And I try to like lower my voice. One of the guards at the front just says stops and says is Stan okay? Did you hear what happened? I heard there was some magic involved. I bet it was that Oscar Yorin fella. You mean that strange there's been there was another strange looking mage that came in wearing a suit. Was it him? What? Mate? I mean I don't know his name but He's the one we're supposed to look after. Gosh, I feel so bad if he did something when he got away from us. Sten's my three-legged race partner, too, <laughs> so I have a lot of stakes in it. You two can both make the second. <laughs> oh, God, I'm so, I'm so nervous. <laughs> oh, crit. Crit good. <gasps> 25. 17. He said... Er- are you two part of the long range crew? I haven't seen you I, uh, back here in the barracks for a while, I think. Yeah. <laughs> we do a lot of... Uh, um, we were called back in because of the attack on the gate that's impending. Yeah. Right, lots, right, right. Mm-hmm, lots mm-hmm, of ranged mm-hmm. like missions to go out and scout and, and mm. yeah, give All some right. information about the monsters. We're always running. The, the Lord Commander just came past this way. Ansem's supposed to be coming along soon, too. Head on in. Cool. Thanks. Do you know the passcode for the dungeon? <laughs> I want to use the dungeon bathroom. Or the, There isn't a privy down there. Yeah. That's all, that's all managed by old Dan. You just go talk to him, and the, the dungeon's full up, though, right now, so... Wah. We haven't have, been here in have so you long. Seen, have you seen the guy with the suit? Because we're supposed to be kind of watching him. And Yeah, I, Petra took him up to the infirmary. Oh. Okay, maybe we should go up there. Oh, we gotta go to the infirmary. Yeah, and then, and then we can 
maybe go see Dan later. We'll see Dan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Old Dan. Old Dan. Good old Dan. Good old Dan. Yeah. Okay, let's go up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Cool. All right. See ya. And I pat him on the back and say, Pluto, you make a really good ranger. Cool. So you are now in the Great Hall. I feel so strong. You're in the Great Hall. There's a there are there's a long set of tables and chairs. And the doorway, one door is open, and you can see there's a staircase there going up. There's actually a, a gallery level behind you as you come in. Mm. And you can hear there's all sorts of commotion run, running up and down. Um, and you can hear on the gallery above, you can hear Petra yelling at somebody. And she says... Where did that weird Bigsby guy go? I thought you were supposed to be watching him. And then another hooded lantern replies, well, there was the whole commotion and I wanted to go see what was going on. He was in the privy and then he was gone. I don't know where he went. And Petra says, so we have some weird guy running around our keep. We don't know who he is. All this chaos happening. We need to find him. Yeah, we need to find him. For sure. Yeah. Is he not up there with you? Uh, Petra looks down across the banister and looks down at, over at the the two of you. She she eyes you up and she says, We've checked all, all up here. It's secure. We're not admitting anyone past the, the second level to the upper levels of the keep right now at all. And no one's headed up, up past this way. He's either gotten out into the courtyard or escaped did did anyone see him go out the fronts no we just came through to the courtyard is there any lower levels that we can check we can secure the lower levels head down yes head down to the dungeon i i think ansem was supposed to go down there as well double check and see i think the lord commander wants ansem too let's go find him right two of you can make one more deception check 16 Six. <laughs> Petra gets a six. She's like, "We're on the night crew, long range. Long range. <laughs> We're part of the long range." Oh, yes, Lord. Uh, Sorry, Petra. you just looked really familiar for a sec. And I start to push Pluto towards the, the where I know the downstairs. To be like, "Thank you, m- ma'am. We'll do our. We'll go check downstairs, and we'll get your brother." Cool. As you come down the stairs as you as you turn to go down the stairs you recognize this old man as old dan and he's running up the stairs he's like oh and he runs right up to you you've got to help that crazy weird looking bald guy's kidnapped Ansem and is trying to get in to see the, pr- the <laughs> get in to see that weird old weather wizard that we've got down there you've got to do something old well, dan show us where they are take quickly. us to them dan quickly <laughs> they're old back dan. in the prison level and he leads you down the uh so, so again smooth. i'm like that's slow so smooth <laughs> <laughs> and he leads you back down the stairs and you are now all on the prison level as well <laughs> as you can overhear sebastian you can overhear this argument coming down the hallways he leads you through to the cells he says they're in the old torture chamber where he's taken up i'll go get more help no dan no 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 you've you've got enough help we've got this you know how strong we are i don't really recognize you you know how strong the lanterns are indeed yes <laughs> you what's got like, this. What's you like take their, your seat. Don't worry about what's it. What's their like catchphrase? What's their like their mantra? Oh gosh, I don't know. Can I? Can they'll, I recall they'll usually what their say mantra is? for for Drakenheim, long live the von Kessels. Oh. For Drakenheim, long, long live, live the, the von, von Kessels. Kessels. <laughs> sell it. And as they <laughs> hear hear that, you, Sebastian, you hear two voices that sound strangely familiar. Cry that out and start rushing down the hallway. The hallways. <clears throat> um, as Oscar Yorin smiles back at you and says, Well, seems like your time's up, friend. I, um... How well did I recognize those voices? 
you're pretty confident in, in who I, they are. I smile <laughs> and I um I look at him and I'm like, we'll see about that, Oscar. And I say that in my normal voice. And then I cast this is I don't know if this will work. I'm gonna cast mold earth to make a ruin appear under Ansem's feet. And I turn to him, I'm like, if you leave that square, that rune will explode. Make a deception check. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Yes. Twenty-six. <laughs> he turn he turns and, and a look of realization comes over on his face and he's like, It's you, Crow. I take the monocle off and hope that that's enough for a big reveal. <gasps> gasp, gasp! And you take the monocle off as Veo and Paluto bash down, come back around the, the, the door, and there's a look of re- recognition across both Ansem and Oscar Yorin's faces. And Oscar Yorin goes, I should have known! You, we need to have words, Oscar. That's an impressive amount of zombies that you have out there, actually. Good yeah, job. Very good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm proud of you. Wait, are we revealing <laughs> that? Am I just like I pull out my hood, I take off my hat, and I say, "I guess we're, I guess we're undisguising now." Uh, really good to see you guys. Yeah. It was, it was getting a little, uh, little iffy in here. I've been on a long-range patrol. Okay, yes. Oh, sorry, I'm done. <laughs> we're done, right? That's so good. That's so good, Pluto. <laughs> And I, I'm so uh, proud of me. I'm so proud of you. You made it in here. I turn to Oscar. You can tell the clunk clunk down the down the hallway. And I give him my scariest predator look that I can give him. And I just say, where is the queen? Ansem speaks up. She's safe. Oscar's taking care of her. Yeah, that's the point of why we brought her to him, but... You liars. We're not liars. Left him with it. We have her now. She is under our protection. And Oscar Yorin is going to take care of her. Where is she? Which part did we lie about? Yeah. I don't know how you did it, but you didn't have her at all. Uh, Oscar Yorin did. Yeah, because we left her with him. Yeah. Yeah, he was like our lockbox. Uh, That quest that we're on to go retrieve the queen so that we can show her to you guys. Yet this is that quest. We're still on it. Yeah, uh, You're the liars. You already had the queen, apparently. So, um, yeah, there goes the trust with the hooded lanterns, I guess. You guys are doing a great job. Oscar Yorin arrived here after our meeting. Mm -hmm. we didn't know during that meeting that he was going to show up here he says that the three of you are working for the Amethyst Academy and that you're planning to destroy the city false false that's a lie negative we've actually been protecting Oscar and I turn to him from the Amethyst Academy they wanted your head and the only reason you're alive right now is because I need to know where the queen is if you want the queen Oscar Yorn replies, you're going to have to kill me and every single hooded lantern in this building. That's fine. Ooh. I told you what would happen if you betrayed us. I told you I would have your head, Oscar, if you betrayed the queen. Ansem says, Veo, You've been good and resourceful, and you've been a friend of the Hooded Lanterns. But you're on the wrong side of this right now. I don't know how the three of you all got in here, and it's insane to me that you got past us all. But Oscar Yorin is safe under our protection, and so is the Queen of Drakenheim, as it should be. So all the agreements that we made in that meeting... um... You guys just broke all of all of those agreements. So, I don't know. That's uh, That seems like a bad You can take life. that up with the commander. Apparently. But for now, the three of you need to leave this room. Leave Oscar Yorin to his work. 
and then we'll talk to the commander about what your fates are going to be. I'd like to remind you of the rune you're standing on, friend. Yeah, you can let that go now, please. I don't. I'm going to go get old Dan. (laughs) Okay, you head back down the hallway where old Dan is. He says, oh, is everything okay in there? Yes, old Dan. Uh, I need the keys to the cells. Oh, what for? You need to hand over the keys to the cells. Ansel needs them. Okay, here you go. Thank you, old Dan. And I'm going to open every single cell (laughs) in the dungeon. I'm releasing all of the Queen of Thieves, all of the zombies. Okay. As you do this, as you as you get the keys. Prison break. <laughs> I guess we're making up our mind on the Hooded Land. <laughs> Oscar Yorin says, You three have one last chance to leave. Because I'm not going down without a fight. We're on a mission to secure the queen from the hooded lanterns. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm a little confused on where we're supposed to be standing right now. It's as simple as this. This has got really murky. Tell us where the queen is. I don't care if she stays with the lanterns, but the lanterns are not the only people that need to The queen is is. upstairs in the Lord Commander's protection directly. Okay, let's go up there. And you will never go up there. Why? Because no one's going to allow you up there. Someone has to allow me up there. (laughs) I I think we're past um, the point where these people are going to be any use. Um, Guys, I saw the Lord Commander outside. Should we? He's not up there. Yeah, I know. We should just go up there. But okay, well, what's our what's our our plan was to rescue the Queen and Oscar from the Hooded Lanterns, but he's here on his own accord. And the Hooded Lanterns are protecting him and the Queen, meaning that they broke <laughs> the deal that we had made and are basically... What was exactly mm, the deal that we made, uh, The deal was that we were going to go get the Queen from Oscar. We were going to... Oscar Yorin speaks up. Ansem, you just stay in that little square. Don't set off whatever explosive runes he's created. Gem and I will deal with them. You guys can roll for initiative. <laughs> Yeah, big thank you to Axe and Shield for providing us with some awesome game accessories. You're about to see the initiative tracker in action, as well as he makes some awesome flight stands and other various things like that. If you're enjoying the audio, that is by Tabletop Audio, so a special thank you to them uh, for all the ambient music, and also to 100 Years Boar for all of the awesome voice work that he does in our little intro video. Also, if you're enjoying the stream and you want to help support our work, you can check out our Patreon. You can find it at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes. This episode of Dungeons and Drakenheim has been sponsored by Skull Splitter Dice. And you can pick up some of these awesome heavy metal dice for yourself by heading on to, to skullsplitterdice.com. Use that discount code DDUDES at checkout to save 15% off your order. And be sure to head to the links below to enter into our monthly giveaway for a free set of dice sent out to you courtesy of Skull Splitter Dice so you can enter in there for your chance to win a free set of dice. Before the break, (laughs) miraculously reuniting themselves in the dungeon level of the Hooded Lantern's Fortress Barracks where Oscar Yorin has set up shop once more. Our heroes are in the this dank torture chamber at the end of the prison hallway where there are three cells, two of which are filled with zombies, one of which is filled with some of the Queen's men. And Pluto Jackson is about to open one of these cells up yep. as Oscar Yorin turns to attack. Ansem, in the room as well, under a glyph created with mold earth that he thinks is going to blow him up uh and gamma also in the room 
Oh, yeah, I forgot about Gemma. Oh, yeah, yeah Gemma's yeah. standing right She's there. She's also in there, the, the halfling <laughs> apprentice that works under Oscar Yorin. Also, you can see her, she as well, um, bits of her hair are starting to fall out, and her eyes are now glowing purple as well. Um, whatever Os- experiments Oscar Yorin has been doing on himself have certainly accelerated in some way. We go to the top of the round. Paluto, you've got the keys in your hand from old Dan. Are you going to open one of these cells? So I want to ask you a question. Yeah. How, what does opening a cell look like in terms of like an action? It's an interaction. So if you want to just snap it open, uh, we'll say it's a bonus action. Okay. So here's my plan. I'm going to open this... No. How many cells could I open in one turn? One. I'm going to run into the room. Mm -hmm. I'm going to grab both of these guys. And I'm going to pull them out of the door. Okay. And then I'm going to lock the door. That will be more than... I'm going to action surge. Okay. (laughs) So you want to run into the room and grab these two. Grab them like by the like by the backs of their, I their okay. chair, and I just pull them through the door, and I go, "Time to go." Sorry, Oscar. Bye. Okay. And then, as we exit the door, I'm gonna close the door behind us and lock it. With okay. The key. Make a strength check to grab these two. And I'm so strong. Just strength. Yep. Fifteen. Okay, you pull both Sebastian and Veo, pushing them into the hallway, okay? We're going to count that as basically you're shoving them both, Yeah. right? Pushing them both into the hallway, and then you're going to action search to slam the door shut and lock them. And then lock the, lock lock the, door. the room. Okay, that happens. <laughs> awesome. Interesting. <laughs> Bye, Oscar. Veo, what are you going to do? Um, I want to feline agility and I want to dash can I grab Sebastian as I dash forward um yes but you can only pull Sebastian half your speed okay um and you'll also need to make a strength check because you're not nearly as strong as Pluto is nope (laughs) (laughs) all right it's okay 12 okay you can pull Sebastian 12 feet okay so I pulled Sebastian 12 feet. Does and that take away from my movement? It costs, th- to do that costs you 30 feet of movement. Okay. And then I have another 30 plus with my uh, Dread Ambusher. I have another 10 feet. Um, and as I keep running, I say, guys, we need to find the queen to make sure she's okay. Lock the doors behind and I start to weave my way out of the dungeon. It's fine there, yeah. <laughs> That's it. <a> okay. <laughs> Oops. Interesting. All right. Sorry, Oscar. Sorry, Muck. Seeing the door slam shut. And you all run out of the room. Oscar Yorin casts Dimension Door. Ah. And him and Gemma appear at the end of the hallway. No! And he scowls at you all and says, I've been watching you three very, very closely, and I know all your tricky little things that you try to do to worm your way out of certain death, and you're not going to get out of here alive this time. Hi, Oscar. (laughs) Oh, man. Cool. And with that, we go to Sebastian. Um... In this cell next to Oscar, there's uh, three Queensmen. Yes. I'm going to use Mage Hand to grab the keys from Pluto and unlock their cell door right next to Oscar. Okay. 
And I am going to run into this room while I do so. Alrighty. <laughs> so I run. As he appears at the end of the hallway, I unlock the Queen's Men gate and turn back to Pluto. I'm like, let's go. And I just run through the door to try cool. to escape. As you do that, Gemma says, not so fast, and she casts Web on Sebastian and Veo. No. What do we need to roll? Or we need to roll to get out. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> don't worry, you're super... What is it? Strength? I don't it, like this. Is it strength? I'm usually on the other end of this. It's dexterity and then strength to break out. Cackling. <laughs> she says, They like that trick, don't they, boss? And Oscar says, Yeah. I wonder why they didn't try to counteract any of your magic. Are they running low on spell slots? No. <laughs> don't read into it. <laughs> Don't think about it. Don't think about it. Okay. Next up, we have Ansem, who's under the room, and is like, You jerks! Don't you leave me here! Um, and with this uh, and the rest of the round, the, um, the Queen's men, seeing their cell door unlocked, they look at Oscar Yorin and they look at Sebastian and they, they say um we're I think we're good thanks we're just gonna just huddle in this corner until this is over we don't mean that no, <laughs> anyone no never mind and the zombies rail against the cell doors we go to the top of the round with Paluto uh, so where are the keys right now the keys are on the ground in front of the hooded lanterns, uh, in front of the, the queen's men's Oops. door. Uh, can I make it to, I want to run at, at, uh, Gemma. Gemma. Okay. Yep. And I'm going to start hitting her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sorry, Gemma. Oh, I'm sorry. It's going to, oh, crit. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. Gemma, I'm so sorry. <laughs> And I just like, Ooh, and I just <laughs> whack her arm. Cool. Uh, she might have tried to cast shield, but that wouldn't have say, uh, wouldn't help her. Uh, uh, twenty one damage. <laughs> she is extremely bloodied, but still barely alive. And does the web hold? No, it Woo! goes down. <laughs> The web disappears as her concentration is broken. And then I shove her. <laughs> cool. I'm not going to keep hitting her. Uh, for ooh, only an eight. I get a one. Okay. <laughs> I shove her out of the way and I just keep running. <laughs> or actually, I'm done running. Okay. I don't want to hurt her. I don't want to. I feel bad. All right. So vale, you're up. This door is unlocked, correct? Yes. Okay. Um... Wait, is Gemma undead? Something's wrong with her, but she isn't undead. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah, I'm still trying to get away. I turn quickly and I say, "Should I call the guards on them?" Is not calling the guards on us. No, crazy magician trying to kill us. Okay, fine. I won't call the guards, but I'm getting upstairs. I'm right behind you. All right, and I dash out. Okay. Um, and then up the stairs. All righty. <laughs> you're up the stairs. You're still in the hooded lantern's garb, but you've just pulled the hood down, mm -hmm. right? Um, and you can see that there is still some, some commotion set, settling around, um, but it seems to be largely contained outside now. Things are rather calm in the keep. So you head back up up the stairs and now you're on the keep le you're on the main level of the keep. Where do you want to go from here? Um I turn back, yell down the stairs. Keep going up 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 the stairs and I keep going up. Okay. Next up is Oscar Yorin. Uh-oh. <laughs> cool. Oscar Yorin Cass says 
says, Gamma, you need to focus. And he casts Bigby's hand. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> you're fine. You're, you're good. Better. Better than I'm so nervous right now. This you're is... all right. Dash, dash away. <laughs> and I actually had... Hand. Yay! No! And the Big B's hand <laughs> appears. Um, and it um, it comes out. Where is it appearing? It, it's going to appear, and it is going to try to grab Sebastian. Oh, it's me. Oh! Um, so, so, Sebastian, um, it comes out, and it appears, and it grabs you. Um, and we can make a grapple. Make a strength check. Come on, skull splitter dice. Do it. Don't oh. fail me now. <laughs> just, just a strength yeah. check? Yeah, you're going to need to get a 25. <laughs> well, I got a 6. I have a okay. minus 1. So this massive, almost zombie-like hand of spectral force appears, and it grabs you, Sebastian, and it holds you in place and starts crushing you. Um, you are, um, you are grabbed by the hand. Um, next we go to Sebastian. So I've just gotten grabbed by a giant magic hand and I have very little that I can do about that. Is it another strength check to try to escape? Yeah, it would be your action and an opposed strength check against the hand. You can do it. Let's see what happens. I push with all of my sorceress might. Okay. Getting a 12. I get a 10. Ooh, so wow! you manage to push one of the fingers and squeeze through its... It just yeah. slip through the fingertips. It, like... It actually... It, um... It takes off my disguise as I'm doing it, <laughs> revealing my Sebastian cloak underneath. I don't okay. know how it was underneath, but... But it is. It is. And now I'm back. And um, I'm going to... But you're still bald. I'm still bald. <laughs> mm -hmm. With glowing eyes. I want to make sure everyone knows that. And I'm just going to run as far as I can towards the door and try to follow Bayo. Okay. Following Bayo. I trust that you'll come up up the stairs. Um, Gemma gets to her feet and uh, cast mirror image on herself. <laughs> <laughs> fair. Um, and we go to the top of the round with Paluto. Uh, I'm gonna run past the hand. Okay, does it, it doesn't make opportunity attacks. No, beautiful. Uh, then I'm gonna dash. I go, I just kind of like r squeeze past the hand and just keep booking it. Okay, you are all on the main level of the keep now. Um, and we uh. Oh, wait, I have a question. Yeah. Could I have grabbed the keys? Were they on the ground? Yes, you could reach and grab the keys as you run. And then yeah. I'm going to, yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to lock one, this, one of the doors on the way out of the... Yeah, you could do that. Yeah, the door right between you and the hand. Yeah, you can grab that, lock it, <gasps> so that you won't be able to dash, but you'll okay. be able to get it, get away. Then I'll, I'll do that without okay. dashing. We go to Veo. Veo, you are now on the main level of the keep. Which way do you want to go? And I see Sebastian behind me. Yes. I say, Sebastian, we need to find the queen and then get the commander up here to have a little chat with him. So we need to go up these stairs. And so it's the same stairs that keep going up that the commander came down before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I still keep traveling up the stairs. Okay. You head up the stairs and at the top of the stairs before the commander's room is... Petra and two other hooded lanterns and she sees you at the base of the stairs and she says, Veo? What? What are you doing here? We're doing what we agreed upon uh, when we were at the meeting, finding the queen. But we have a crazy madman downstairs trying to kill us. It's a great welcome as usual with the hooded lanterns. I heard she's in the commander's room. Are you going to move for me? Petra looks at 
make an intimidation check. 22. Petra looks back at you and says, Yeah. Bayo, bayo. <laughs> I don't mess with the muscle. You, if you go in there, what are you going to do? I'm going to make sure and do my duty to make sure she is all right. You should go down and get the commander so we can have a little chat with him about what the heck is happening with you guys hiding the queen. We just got her. Oscar Yorin showed up late last night here, just as we were getting back from the meeting. The commander, Ansem, these two and myself, we're the only ones that know she's back here. All right. So you've had a day to try to find out where we are. We've been tracking Oscar to his house and to here. We've had enough time to do that. You didn't, you didn't come and talk to us. You've just showed up here breaking in. Actually, we showed up at the gate that we were told we weren't allowed to let through, which was what, this morning? So you've had her since last night. We were told we were not allowed to get through the gate. So as a, as a sign we took, we were not allowed. Those were the commander's orders. And the commander should know that if you had the queen, we should have been let in. So as far as I'm concerned, we need to have a chat with the commander now to figure this out. And don't forget, we saved your life, Petra. You do you owe did. us. But you three are acting like loose cannons. No, if you go past here, if you go Veil, vale, I'll let you past, but I won't let you out of this building. I'll let your father deal with that part. What we need to do right now is make sure that we're getting away from that crazy wizard, warlock, magic guy downstairs who's trying to kill us for us doing our duty to make sure that the queen is okay. Because that was our agreement. We are supposed to be bringing the queen to cool. the mill. We've chatted a little too long for oh, one sorry. round. Sorry. So we'll, we're going <laughs> to no, okay. we're gonna advance it a little bit back here uh, to uh, Oscar Yorin downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Running okay. for my life. Oscar Yorn grabs, takes the hand, pulls it back towards the door in a punch, and the oh. hand tries to punch through the door that you closed to let him free. Oh. Getting a 19, it bashes into the door, but the door holds steady. Ooh. And Oscar Yorn says, uh, growls and says, Gemma, get yourself together. <sighs> It looks like these they've slipped through our fingers right now. And he, he looks through the bars at you, Paluto, and he says, You just remember, I'm the only one that can help the queen now. Don't think that you're going to be able to talk your way out of this. Oh, I'm not much for talking. And I look at Gemma's arm. Sorry, sorry about your arm. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Sebastian, you're up next. I guess I keep running. I'm going to dash up the stairs until I'm behind Veo and then run straight into her mm -hmm. and see Petra and the guards. And I'm just like, <laughs> that's what I do. Okay. I'm crashing into them. Uh, lovely morning. Yeah. I see we have a little bit of a misunderstanding. We do. Perhaps we should talk about it and not kill each other. It would be ideal for all of us, I think. All right. Petra says, I, I haven't even talked to her myself. She's only the commander has seen her. If you want to go ahead, you can. But the commander says she's really upset about something. And she doesn't like to be seen. She said He said that there's something really wrong with her, that she's really sick. 
Are you sure you want to go and barge in there and disturb her? We're the ones who have been taking care of her sickness. We're the ones who brought her to Oscar to look after that. And Oscar's been tending to her. Well, we want to know if there's been any improvement. (laughs) We're just trying to... I just want to see my princess. Or my queen. All right. Luna, was that you? (laughs) With that, there's a crash and a bellowing voice. Um, as the commander steps in through the great hall um, and cries out, Where is that mage? Uh, which one? <laughs> I, I look at Patrick, I'm like, Does he mean me or, or Oscar? I don't know, Petra says. If you want to go see him, he's downstairs. kind of want him to come up (laughs) um the time for diplomacy yeah i want to i want to see the queen and talk to him with the queen there i i'm gonna yell down the stairs parlay (laughs) what parlay is that sebastian crow yes and there's a rush as Paluto comes up the stairs and Paluto <laughs> makes eye contact with the command. Paluto Jackson! Commander! Lord Commander! Are you three behind murdering one of my men out there? No. We're here to look for Oscar and the Queen. You didn't tell us you had him. Why were we left out in the cold? He... he looks around at all the other he looks at all the hooded lanterns that oh, are yeah. around here. I'm kind of giving away a and lot. And he says you, all of you, report to Commander Petra, um, uh, Captain Petra immediately. Petra, assemble these ones. Give them the briefing on what's occurred. You'll have to forgive me. Most of my men don't know about our honored guest. Um, that's my bad. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Lord Commander, it's just that you, I thought we had a deal and you were kind of mean at the last meeting and we were going to get her and we left her with Oscar and then you had Oscar and we tracked him here. And as the, at that Oscar... F- Yorin comes up the stairs behind you with the giant hand still looming over him. And he says, Lord Commander, these three are trying to kill me. They're assassins sent by the Amethyst Academy trying to steal my secrets. Actually, we're here (laughs) doing our job to find the queen. We just knew she was with him. I feel like this is a big miss. brings his hand to his head and says... (laughs) This is insane. Parlay. This is madness. And all of you, you included, Mr. Yorin, need to start talking sense immediately before some heads roll. Shut the door. Petra, bar the doors. Where's Ansem? He's downstairs. Uh, You can tell him he can actually move. It's it's just a little... No, just turn turn it off. Just turn it off. I, 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 like disenchant the spell. Yorin, calm your scary hand of a spell there. We have a few moments to talk, but my temper has been flared and I have a dead man that is melted out in the street in front of us and I want to also know who's responsible for that. Sebastian very genuinely yells down, what do you mean he melted? (laughs) (laughs) What, what, What is happening? Oh my god. (laughs) There seem to be bigger things at stake here. Are we being attacked? Pluto? I don't know. I heard something happen to one of my friends, and I'm not too happy about it either. Some dark magic. We don't do dark magic. Are we under attack? We must be. Where's the queen? I changed the subject. Okay. Violently. The Lord Commander says, disarm now, sheath your sword. There's blood on it. Who have you killed? 
I attacked a girl with web that was webbing my friend, and I feel really bad about it. Oscar Yorin speaks up and says, Lord Commander, these three are just assassins. They should just be killed now if I was before assassin. they cause more chaos in this city. Hired mage if I was an assassin, you'd be dead, Oscar. I'm not here to kill you. I'm here because we're looking for the queen. And it's a little frustrating that you ran off and then you tried to kill us with your cloud and your weird uh, uh, insect people. And we don't bring that up all the time. And we're not all throwing that in your face. The Lord Commander, you tried to kill them, Oscar Yorn? Multiple Twice. times. Multiple times. <sighs> to be fair, I think, Make a persuasion check. I think we're kind of even. Yeah. <laughs> we also saved his life. Uh, 15. All of you. Come here in the Great Hall and sit down. I come down the stairs, hands in the air with my wand in one hand, <laughs> holding it up. Not like menacingly, like just holding it. And I like walk past him. I'm like, any seat? On the bench. Oh. I go You're in the, the great hall. Do you, you come down? Do you I come down the stairs, but I want to stay close to the stairs. The Lord Commander orders his men <coughs> to close the doors around the Great Hall. There's six hooded lanterns in the room, all carrying their crossbows. You six, none of what is said in this room gets out of it. Do you understand me? Do you have their names? And they all say, yes, them? sir. Petra. Go get Ansem. And Petra goes off to get Ansem. Sorry, man. So, Oscar Yorin uh -oh. puts his spell focus down, dismisses his hand, and sits at the edge of uh, at one end of the table, the Lord Commander standing at the other end. says, I think the time for talk has almost expired. But in light of the fact that I don't want to see this entire place blow up in front of me, we can chat. Uh, Lord Commander, if I may. The Lord Commander says, no, you may not. Oh. That was easy. Let me make one thing clear. so that we are all on the same page here. This man, Oscar Yorin, showed up here last night with his cart and a bunch of zombies and begged us for safe quarter because he claimed that he had been assaulted by you three under the order of the Amethyst Academy. With no, with, and then, when we asked him why, he revealed to us that he had Queen Lenore in his care. I can verify that he did indeed have the Queen, and she is upstairs in my quarters, where she is safe and being tended to, she seems to be in, she seems to be rather ill, an illness that I am to understand Oscar Yorn is working to treat. At that, I determined that you three were rogue agents and that you are not to be admitted in this, and my orders to keep you from being admitted into the city remained unchanged. As I have been working to assess this situation, let me be clear. If you are going to ask for access to the queen, if you are going to ask for the queen to leave this building, 
if you are even going to suggest that, you may leave with your lives now and never come back to Drakenheim. There, under no circumstances, <clears throat> will Queen Lenore be leaving the protection of myself, and certainly not into your care. However, what we may discuss is whether or not I can trust this Oscar Yorin fellow. Because I need to know what has happened to Queen Lenore. Uh, Lord Commander, how do you know it's the Queen? Because I saw her. And it nearly took my life. Me too. Been there, bro. I I don't want this situation to get any more out of hand than it already is. We were under orders from the meeting that we were in. First of all, are you agents of the Amethyst Academy? No, there may have been a misunderstanding involving that. We we have done some work for them in the past, but as you know... You lie! I saw you. I saw you with my magic. I watched you from afar and you didn't even know. That is invasion of privacy, sir. <laughs> You've been playing me like a fiddle. I've been keeping you alive, Oscar. The Amethyst Academy wanted you dead, and I made a deal with them. And it's only a matter of time, and right now... If you've been watching, then you should know that we were trying to keep you alive so that you could continue your research. We did that. All I know is that you've been meeting with that... scum, Eldrick Runeweaver. Okay, so you guys have a little tiff going on and um the lord commander says enough of this yes thank you you caspian i tell me why you're here Oh, boy. Well, I'm supposed to get some items back to my family. Things that belong to Caspia. I have a few on my list, and I came here with about 100 men. And I lost them. I lost them all. Except for these two. And I need to get into the city. And I need to find these items. And give them back to my family. They're treasures of Caspia. And they belong to Caspia. Hmm. And would... Lenore be one of those treasures of Caspia? Lenore is no treasure. She's the queen. Yes. But she's only a Von Kessel by marriage, but a Caspian by birth. Wow. Oh. Oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I didn't know that. Did I, you know that, Vale? No, I didn't. I'm as stunned as you are. I feel like I should have known that. I detect deception. <laughs> I was out in a long patrol, and I didn't remember. <laughs> oh, yeah. Not a hooded Pluto, you're not, you're not here for the queen, are you? No. I... It's complicated. I think if, uh. if he was here for the queen, then... He would have already had the chance to get her. I trust Pluto. I trust that he's not I, here for I the trust queen. Pluto, but complicated is complicated. This whole situation I is just, complicated. Lord Commander, you know as well as I do that 
The queen's safety is of the utmost importance, along with her birthright and her heritage and her claim to the throne. It's just that I don't know if we can, I don't know if we can trust Oscar to give her the best care with what he's done he's tried to murder us several times he gave me a potion that I stabbed in my chest and it made me do things it made me do things to my armor (laughs) I had to get new armor I had to throw it all out all I'm saying is is that if the queen's safe then I'm I'm happy, but there's, but these, these relics, they're, I I think, I think they're in the cathedral. And if we work together, we can recover them. Fine. And I think we need to put some of this, someone's dead and (laughs) someone has zombies and whatever behind us. Okay. We were in the meeting. And I know we didn't trust you before. But I trust you to make the right decision now. Are you in cahoots with that Jupiter Jones? I hate that guy. I love him and I hate him. I have such a torn relationship with him. I don't know... I don't know why he's here in that s- this city, but it worries me now. Oh, because he's Caspian too. Yes. Yes, interesting. Lenora was a Jones. Oh. <gasps> Jupiter might be after the queen. Mm. See what happens when we work together? We have information on Jupiter. You have information on Jupiter. This whole this whole thing has been a horrible misunderstanding. I tell you this. If you Caspians are trying to make some sort of play or claim. The cards will fall where they're supposed to. Everything will come out in the wash. As we say in Caspia. Veil. Commander. The queen keeps asking about you. And I've been wanting to her. know where your father is. Yes, I know. Me and her have discussed what our missions are. The queen has given us a mission. Unfortunately, all of this political mongering has gotten in the way of me actually doing my duty to the queen. This is one of the reasons why I need to see her. But also, I want to point out the fact that Oscar said we came and attacked him at his house and that's the reason why he fled is a lie. Yes, and you just attacked me down in the dungeons. We were never at your house until afterwards. We came across it in shambles. We also came down to try to find you to find where the queen was. That's all this has led to is finding the queen. We couldn't care less about you, Oscar. You three have been trying to play me since you walked into my manor. And I should have killed you then and there. But I thought... Oscar, we were hired to kill you the first time that we met you. Exactly. And I counted my lucky stars that you didn't. Why didn't we? I figured that if I killed you the first time, the Academy might send someone actually competent to do the job we brought you lilies yes you did and blood (laughs) we give you lilies and blood we helped your research we didn't work with you and then you turned it over to the academy i turned a sample of it over okay we did do that don't you don't you understand that it was mutually beneficial we kept you alive we did do that for how much longer for as long as you don't double cross the queen and then you did so i mean that's why we're here now fighting you lord commander the Amethyst Academy cares nothing about Drakenheim. They care nothing about the Queen. They care nothing about the city. They only care about power. 
and nothing more. And luckily, we're not with the Amethyst Academy or else... But you've been working for them. We wouldn't have handed the pawns. We wouldn't have handed the queen over to you had we been working for the Amethyst Academy to that level. We are here to serve Drakenheim. But unfortunately, your magic, your thoughts and actions of t- trying to kill us have gotten in our way of doing that. We would have brought her to the spot that was agreed upon in our meeting commander. Or is that not still a valid uh No, connection? it's not. Oh, and the queen is in my care now and it's going to stay that way. Have you talked to the paladins about this? No, I haven't. What would they think of your negging on their agreement? To be perfectly frank, The paladins can do whatever they want. They can't... The queen is of utmost importance. The royal family is of utmost importance. And keeping the queen protected and safe is the most important thing. I thought we had now, an agreement for that. I agree and you're breaking, with you. you're breaking all the trust that was put out in that zone of truth room. You're breaking it all. I don't see that it that way. Of course you don't. I'm open to working with the Silver Order. I'm open to working with the Amethyst Academy as far as it's concerned. As long as they have the good interests of the city or at least interest in controlling the city again. Helping us control the city again. But make no mistake... I want to see Drakenheim brought back to the way that it used to be. And I will bleed every last drop of my blood to see that happen. And that means upholding the oath that I made to the royal family to protect them with my life. And I cannot uphold that oath if the Queen of Drakenheim is in anyone's care but my own. No, we want her in your care, but we want it to be... Also, we need to know about it and the paladins need to know about it because that's what was agreed upon. Is that all Neither three- you nor the Silver Order are in any position to dictate terms regarding Lenore. And in fact... That was what that whole meeting was. I keep knocking this stuff. I don't... Commander, I- we are on the same mission and I, I want you to consider that the reason we didn't bring her here in the first place, because we know you'd be able to protect her to a point, is that there's a greater threat in which we think is going to impact the royal family and Lenore. And you know who that is. And you know that we have told you that we have had experiences mm. knowing that there's a mole. Also, whoever attacked Oscar Yorn in his home... When we got there, we fought. We found a bunch of Queen's men. Yes. Dead. Which leads us to believe that somehow, once again, maybe not through you, but somehow the Queen's men are receiving information, which is what we're all very concerned about. Yes. And you announcing to everybody, to half of my staff, that the Queen is here. The o- in, Until... Slept out. Less than 20 minutes ago, the only people that knew... That Lenore von Kessel was in this building where myself, Petra, Ansem, and my other two soldiers upstairs. But none of them know that Pluto also calls Petra queen. Yeah, she's my queen. Queen of my now heart. The, my, these six also know. There's more people that know. I apologize for that. Well, I apologize <laughs> on behalf of Pluto for that. <laughs> my Herald, thank you, my Herald. Lord Pluto Jackson, apologetic prince. I'm going to give you a choice. You three, if it means so much to you, you can fall in line, take the oath, and you can be the queen's personal guard and you can stay here until she is back to health. If it means that much to you, then you can stay here and guard her yourselves. Stay as long as you like. We'll give you all the food and board that you need. 
We love our freedom. Well, well, well there's uh, there's another question before before we go down that path is is what about the Queensmen who attacked Oscar? Oscar, you think it was us who attacked you? It was you who attacked me. You saw the three of us? Yes. Interesting. What? Oscar, say that again. You saw us attack you? Yes, the three of you came and assaulted me in my home last night. Did but I have this javelin? Yes. But we were in the meeting. Yeah. You, Lord- Commander, you said that he arrived here right after our meeting. So how does that doesn't pan out? Somebody attacked Oscar that was... And Sebastian had this type of hair, right? Yes. You looked exactly as you do now. <laughs> Bald? Trapped you. Trapped you, Oscar. He got bald on the wall. You're lying. Yeah, I wasn't bald last night. That's not true. Lord Commander. Lord Commander turns to Oscar. Did you stage the attack on your own home to frame them? And now we're all doing the shifty eyes. <laughs> <laughs> everyone's turned to Oscar. Everyone turns to Oscar Yorin. Yeah, everyone just turns to Oscar Yorin. Cornelius is a new look. You lie. That's correct. Oscar is seething, caught in his own lie. Cat got your tongue. Oscar, you have to be Oscar. honest with us. Cat. Why did you frame us? Because you lied to me. And it's only a matter of time now before the Amethyst Academy comes calling for me. You are under our protection, Oscar. We made that choice the first time we met you. They're coming. And they're going to be coming in force. And they're not going to mess around once they do. I know that you think that we're incompetent, but you had the choice of either having us on your side or against you. And then you tried to frame us. And now you've given them all my research, years worth of work, and they're going to be able to have their whole run of this city. That that was all your research? Interesting, because when you handed me the book, you said it was only a small snippet of your research. all of it. Oh, so you're just full of experience. But if they're going to be able to reverse engineer my own potions. Think of the help that we could provide to Drakenheim with the haze. You think that they're going just going to just give that out freely? <laughs> you really are stupid. I went to school there. He's a little biased to the they academy. Were really we know. They were nice to me until there was the incident. And uh, then they weren't as nice to me. And then they had to hire me from elsewhere but anyway that that's beyond the point that's a different story um and oscar well now that you know you've had it out with us i guess our your well-being isn't really our problem anymore so you can be rid of our help if you want but i can still be useful i can still help with the queen oh oh are you sorry (laughs) all these lies coming out of your mouth are you really going to be able to help the queen because we have someone who can help. And I, they, I turn to the Lord Commander and say, remember, the Paladins have strong magic as well. As much as I know you don't want to work closely with them, that was our original plan, is to get the Paladins to help her. The Paladins her. will kill her. They'll see her as an abomination. There's nothing wrong with her. She's just transcended. What she's become is a beautiful thing. Uh-oh. Commander? There's no cure for it, Commander. Commander. What's happened to your beautiful queen? (laughs) This is what happens when a necromancer. (laughs) There's nothing, nothing that anyone can ever do. Commander. 
The Amethyst Academy happen to have a lot of Oscar's research and are able to produce the same delirium potions as him. Perhaps with our relationship with the Amethyst Academy, we could get some wizards in, or, or spellcasters in here who know about the delirium who could help with the queen. In reverse. Now, obviously, only with you agreeing to it and only under your supervision. Correct. Not to mention, we also have healers from the Silver Order who may be capable of helping her. Rather than this pathetic necromancer who keeps lying through his teeth to try to save his own skin. Just saying. Let's create a new Drakenheim. A strong a Drakenheim. Yeah. A better Drakenheim. But like the old one. Kind of like, like the old one. <laughs> kind of like the old one, but with a big meteor as like a as Landmark. a tourist spot. Oscar Yours says, no, 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 no. You three. No. You're out of options, Oscar. You've lied your way into a hole. You've broken every bit of trust. You've burned every bridge. What do you have left? Gemma. Gemma's <laughs> bleeding out somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Zombies. Gemma. His god. Not even your god will save you now. Fine. The Lord Commander says. Then it's agreed. What should we do with him? I mean, you have a dungeon downstairs. Do you have any sort of like anti-magic means? No? Knock him out. What would you normally do, Lord Commander, to a, to a man of this stature? In the old days, we relied on the Academy for and the St. Selena's to incarcerate spellcasters. Down here is just a brig. We don't we didn't keep prisoners here any long term. We used to have a few mages on, but they've all died now. I don't think I'll be able to keep this man prisoner. Then but you we exile. can do what we can. It's either exile think, or execution then. Yeah, I think Oscar Yorn, in the name of the Queen, I'm going. You are now under our arrest. I have no cause to execute him. He hasn't murdered anybody. That's fair. I. And I mean, he's practiced necromancy, but on outlaws and bandits. He is a very powerful There's no rule of law here anymore. Can he still make potions for you? Can he be a, a prisoner here that continues to work? Yeah, like a work for release program. Like if he makes a thousand potions. I won't do it. I'll be revenged on you all. And he cast a mention door. Ah, man. He's <sighs> so good at that. See? And I cast Commander. minor illusion to make myself have hair again. <laughs> Commander, and I, I walk up to him. I say, <laughs> Your hand just goes through it. <laughs> oh, if you had trusted us from the beginning, we could have told you all this. But unfortunately, you kind of put us in a tight spot protecting our mission to the Queen. We want to work together, but we need to have some lenience in order to do what we're here to do. I'd like to see the queen and talk to her about my mission, if it's all right with you. Are we not going to address the fact that a wizard just teleported out of here, claiming <laughs> that he was going to revenge us? <laughs> it's for no, that's day. that's for that's for, that's for future day. Pluto, Sebastian <laughs> Vare to deal with. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Is there wine on the table? I'm going to pour myself some wine. I have some Illyrian ale if you want some. No, I, take the free wine. Yeah, I'll take the free wine. <laughs> well. well, this has been a very lovely chat. Compared to the last one we had, Commander, um, <laughs> I, th I think this one went better. Commander, if I do say so myself. Oscar Yorin can teleport. 
He could. So can Pluto. Do you think he'd go see the queen? I hope he wouldn't be stupid enough to do that. Let's, Let's get go upstairs. Up there. Wait, rush up. I, I feel line <laughs> agility up the stairs faster than everyone. Okay. Upstairs. The commander has allowed the queen to have his quarters. He's prepared a separate room. He knocks on the door. And he says, Your Majesty, are you there? And you hear the queen's voice say, Lord Commander, you can come in. He opens the door. And he turns back to you all. It's safe. Oscar Yorn isn't here. Do you want to talk to her alone? No, together. Okay. As a family. Yes. As a friends. And I walk in, and I want to first kind of peek in, because I want to make sure that I know the last time we saw her, her eyes were working again. So I wanted to make sure that everything is safe. <laughs> My queen, we're here to see you again. Don't be alarmed, Oscar. Oscar Yorin has made something for her that helps. The queen was, you'll pardon me, she was a very vain woman. And she, well, as you step into the room, the commander has outfitted his, his personal quarters as sumptuously as the hooded lanterns appear to have been able to manage. It seems like they might have scoured through some of the brothels in the area for the <laughs> finest things they could find. We've been there. Um, and other bits of... And they have outfitted this room with whatever fineries they've been able to find. There are several bottles of wine that are on a table with some goblets a large bed that they have set up that is clearly not the commander's bed. Like the, this is something that they brought in from who knows where for her. Um, it's very fine. And looking out the thin window is um, Lenore Von Kessel. She has changed clothes and it seems that someone in the interim period has laundered them for her because she is wearing a completely outrageous black dress. Um, it looks like she has gowned herself for a ball. It has like all, all this frill and this wide hat that she's put on. And as she turns around, she's wearing a porcelain doll's mask. Ooh. Interesting. My queen, is that you? Hello, Veo. Yes, it is. Lord Commander, these are your friends, yes? I think you'll have to speak up. Because she points to the mask. And the mask, you can see just on the side of it, there is a small lever made of metal that's been imbued on the, the mask. And you can see that Oscar Yorin appears to have built shutters on the eyes of the mask. And she says, the doctor, where is he? My lady, he's, he's gone. He has betrayed us. <sighs> oh, oh dear. He made this this for me. I can't see when it's closed, but he says that none can look upon me now, and I not upon them, lest they turn to dust. He is right, my lady, but we are here to undo what he has done. He has not tried to make you better, and that is our goal, is to try to bring back some semblance of your old self. I am feeling strange. But I am myself. And I will not be 
argued over and shut away like some trophy. What is it that you wish to do, Your Majesty? I... I wish to see my children, and I am to understand that something has happened to my city. Something that I don't understand. This was a beautiful place, and I see it now, and it is still beautiful, but in a different way. She touches the mask. Steward Johan told me that he was going to go to the castle and find the children. Is that, is that where you want us to go? Where, where I need you to find my children. Well, I have the portrait that we were given by you last time we saw. Unfortunately, we have had some incidents. <laughs> happen in between and we've been shut out of the city by the commander so that way we cannot get in to look for them and we would like to know what you'd like us to do lord commander is it true have you barred the steward's daughter from the city and the lord commander says yes i wasn't sure i could trust her See that that order is lifted, Lord Commander. Yes, Your Majesty. I bow, a deep bow. Thank you, Your Majesty. I'm here. We are here to serve you and Drakenheim. Lovely. The Lord Commander speaks up and says... He turns to you and says, we have no assurance that the heirs are alive. We've been looking for them for years. We might be able to find our way into the castle. The question now is, who's going to help the queen? And what do we do about the attack on the wall that's scheduled for a couple days? You said like two days? Two more days? Two more days. Two more days. Um, I think... And this is just a thought. I'm not ordering anybody or making any assumptions. Just want to get that out of the way. What if we brought in the healer who we met from the Silver Order? They are aware of the queen already. She may be able to take a look at her here under your supervision. We can still help with the cathedral because we need to obtain that will and Pluto would like to obtain a few things that belong to Caspia, once again, under the supervision of us and you guys and the Silver Order. Once we've taken care of the Knoll problem, then we should head to the castle hmm. and see if we can find any remaining members of the Von Castle family. Lord Commander, have you been looking for them? And he replies, for years, my queen, for you, for years, that you still live is nothing short of a miracle and our greatest victory to date. We've been fighting to uphold everything that we held dear. Veo. If your father is alive, if the Lord, if if the Lord Steward, if Johann went back to the castle, it's possible that he's trapped there. It's possible that whatever happened to Lenore, something like this could have happened to others. It could have happened to the heirs. It could have happened to the king. Gives us hope that 
they may still be alive. But if we can get working on trying to find a cure for this, then if we do find them, we'll be able to get them back. Hmm. So I think this should be our first priority in working together with the different factions is to get this cure figured out. I'll be honest. I trust Flamekeeper Ophelia far more than I trust Oscar Yorn. Agreed. We didn't know her at the time. Oscar Yorn was the only person we knew working on Delirium, so it made sense. You found her and you brought him, brought her to him. It's, frankly, it's remarkable that he didn't do worse. He knew that we would find him if we, he did. We were pretty strict with him, and uh, it worked out. So, you have to give us some credit for that, I hope. She was we also in much... <laughs> we stuck the landing, but we, uh, the performance The, was the routine was... <laughs> she also was not in this condition when we found her. She was in dire need of magical emergency She almost blew us help. up. Hmm. And without that, if we had brought her here, she would have not only killed more. She seems far more lucid now. Now, yes. But you should have seen her when we got and her. And at least contained <laughs> by the flame. What happens when she opens those shutters? It's terrifying. We agree. Yeah, we, we saw a lot of that. It was It was terrifying then, and we haven't really opted to see it again. Just keep a mirror on you, just in case. Yeah, yeah have you, um, have I used you, a mirror. Don't let her look in a mirror. Yeah. Have you ever uh, got delirium near her? Don't. Don't. Don't give her a shouldn't. delirium. <laughs> Good to know. She's been making some interesting requests. She. She still has a mind for fashion, and she doesn't like wearing the same thing two days in a row. We're finding it a little bit difficult to accommodate. Oh, we have... Uh, did Oscar not bring her suitcases? We, he did. He brought most of her things, yeah. Okay. We have some of the, her stuff, too, at the tower. We do have more of her stuff at the tower. Oh, yeah, do you have anything in, in your bag? Not in my bag. No. Um, by the way, can I have my bag back? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. There you go. You. <laughs> <sighs> We're still going to go to this meeting with the paladins. I don't think it would be wise to piss them off when we are dealing with this right now. I think it'd be better to keep this alliance at least until short order where mm -hmm. we may not need them anymore. Do you think it's best that we still do the three-way strike on the cathedral? And, Absolutely. And then from there, we'll follow the queen's orders. And My queen, the castle is lost. Mm. We can't investigate it until we hold the other gates of the city. Yes. Veo and her companions will assist us and we will find we will find what has happened to your children. She says I miss them. <sighs> Poor Leonard was just becoming a man and Katarina and Eliza. Still just young women. Babies. It's been 15 years, you say, Commander. My children are all grown up. We will find them. We will find them. We will find them. We have to find them. Now, can we rest? <laughs> <laughs> yes commander do you have somewhere that we can stay the night i'm uh pretty beat up from uh just lay in the queen's bed i'd like you to just, <laughs> i'd like nap. to sleep outside her room if it's okay with you commander again while i'm here i would i would be honored to be as part of her guard I'll we have a room. teleporting I'll necromancer at large maybe in the room then <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah I happen to know somebody who um, has a knack for hunting mages. Just saying. Is We're going you? to need to deal with him in time and find out where he's gone. 
we're also going to need to figure out quickly. You mentioned the mole, our little mole problem yes. in the meeting while Oscar Yorn was here. He's going to go to the Queen of Thieves. That's the only other place that he can hide. Okay, so we have the cathedral attack. We have Oscar going to the Queen of Thieves. And I mean, that's where I, w- if I were him. Yeah, we have to assume all, all possibilities of that. But do you think this stronghold is going to be enough to keep out the Queen of Thieves, a teleporting mage, and potentially more danger? Where else? Well, we discussed before. And I'm just going to throw this out there, and I don't mean this to sound harsh, but three um, idiots just infiltrated your entire base. So either you need to say right now that we are competent, (laughs) or you need to admit that it might be easier to sneak in here than you think. By the way, you smell terrible there. (laughs) How did you get in here? (laughs) Tomorrow morning, I would like you to meet with my soldiers and explain to them exactly how you got in here. You're a mage, yes? Yes. As well, I'd like you to investigate this black goo that my soldiers found outside. It seems to have consumed one of my men. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) I I wouldn't touch it. I wouldn't touch it. I might need a sample. Yes, we can we can see to that. I suppose all of Oscar Yoren's lab equipment is yours now. No. We should oh, also gaining lab equipment. <laughs> yeah, we should I... also yeah, like trash it just in case he comes back for it. He might be down there right now, like scooping stuff up. Ansem should take care of him. Where are Ansem and Petra? Um they Ansem and Petra's freed. freed <laughs> okay, good. <Ansem. laughs> Tell him we're sorry. We didn't mean to. We were just trying to do what was best. Thanks, Ansem. Yeah, for the first time ever, I actually walk up to Ansem, and I'm like, I'm really sorry. There was a miscommunication. Um, we By were, the way, that mm-hmm. ruin wasn't going to explode, and I was out of spell slots. But you did a great job standing up for yourself. He shakes his head. <sighs> it was a test. It was a warning. Warning shot. <laughs> and you passed. You passed. Good You're job. lucky that you got out of there quickly. I was about to shoot you in the neck. No. <laughs> I, I'm glad that you didn't. Yeah. And I'm glad that I didn't blow you up. And now we can move on and be friends. Yeah. Um, water the, under the uh, bridge. Yeah, water under the bridge. Petra also turns and says... Um, Unfortunately, Lord Commander, the three, the three um, Queen's men that were in the cells seem to have escaped during the chaos. That Oscar, that was oh ah man, it's so frustrating. He was just like he was causing so much chaos. There's black goo outside. There's Queen's men escaping, and you say that Oscar might go to them. Do you know where that? <sighs> Do we we don't know where they could have gone. Do you know any how far Oscar Yorn might have teleported? How he might have disappeared? Um, my estimation. What's what's the furthest you've been able to teleport? I can go approximately five hundred paces. I'll send some of my men out and see if we can catch them if he hasn't gone too far. You should also go back to his original lab. Mm. Yeah, he might he might go back there, but I might try. Um. So, you're welcome to stay here. Yes. I'm sorry that we've had so much distrust between us, the Lord Commander says. But it seems now we are all aligned. Agreed. Yes. As we should have been. It is as it should be. I only have what's best for this city at heart. I need you to understand that. We need to trust each other. There can't be any more secrets between us if we're going to work together productively. I agree. Yeah. I think all our secrets are out on the table and know that they they came from a good place. They came from a place of 
wanting the city to be the best that it can be and, and the protection of it. But I think we're aligned now. I think we were all a little wound up on the whole protection thing and had different views on that. But it, as it turns out, we all we were all working for the queen the whole time. I can see that now. <sighs> You have to understand that for me, having the queen under my protection is the only option. I do understand that. You were brought up as a member of the elite soldiers to, who looked after the queen. That's your duty. That's your way of paying honor. I, I hope that you also respect, though, that with Drakenheim in the state that it's in, we also need access mm. to the queen as well because... Things can go wrong, and we trust you, but you need to trust us, like you said. And I do think it's important that we talk to the paladins as well and get their healers in here because they have very powerful mm -hmm. healing magic, and maybe we can do even better for her. In the meantime, he pulls out the portraits of the queen's children. <sighs> These portraits are 15 years old. Is there like a local artist who could like do a, what they might look like? Yes, but this sniffer doesn't lie. <sighs> and neither does this monocle. <laughs> Full disclosure, I'm really sorry. I spilled the black goo. I didn't mean to. It, it murdered his face. I didn't know. I thought we were, I'm just, I feel like there's a lot of trust right now. And I wanted to get it out of the table. <laughs> Lord Commander, so I spilled the goo. I'm that's so all sorry. Of our out in truth. Yeah, table. I feel now. like if we're just doing clean slate, fresh start, I didn't know it was going to melt his face. I'm super, super, super sorry. He can go in jail for the night. I didn't, I didn't know that was happening. Neither did I. Um, I didn't know it was going to melt his face. To be fair, we encountered that goo before, and it didn't, it didn't do that. I just felt like you were just saying all these things about trusting, and I was like, I didn't want to hold any secrets. It's still out there. Okay. I'm gonna. <laughs> Sebastian's I'm gonna, gonna, I'm get gonna it. go. I'm gonna go. Sebastian, can you go magic yeah, it up? Yeah, um, I'll I'll be back. Lord Commander, where did you find that? I got it out of a mirror. mirror. <laughs> How did it end up in the street? I fell, spilled it. Fell out of his pocket. I'm so sorry. There's so much of it. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Somebody get me a vial. Do you have any other dangerous potions or devices with you that you found in the city? So many. <laughs> we pretty much keep everything. We're so just like full disclosure, <laughs> not I'm not so sorry about. Not I'm so sorry about uh, what's his name? Uh, not Muck. <laughs> Sten. 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 Good old Sten. And I'll I'll write a proper. Um, Eulogy. Uh, eulogy slash like uh, war letter to his family. Okay. For you. I, I well, that's you. where we're going to end it for today. Oh, gosh. <laughs> With that. You, oh. um, from here. Gary Veo came out today. <laughs> you will have still three days before the meeting with the paladins and going forward with the attack on the gate. For all of you, we are going to be taking next week off. Um, we got some work stuff coming up. We got some organizational things. So last week in March, we're going to skip. No show next week. But there is an awesome bonus episode if you can't get enough Drakenheim yeah. um, or enough of us playing D&D. &D. Uh, make sure that you head on over to our YouTube channel where we have our Descent into Doom, our special episode that we recorded playing the Dwarven Forge Dungeon of Doom module. Uh, it's super cool. It was a lot of fun for us to play. Uh, we recorded it separately and posted it up online. Um, and it's the the whole Drakenheim crew playing the uh, the Dungeon of Doom module by Dwarven Forge, which was super awesome, a lot of fun, and we just played it as like a non-canon one-shot. And it was really great. So if, you wanna, yeah. if, if you're not getting enough Drakenheim in your life, be sure to check that out. Um. Also, I will say, uh, check out all of the people who have joined the Descent into Doom. There's a lot of yes. amazing people involved in this project. So if you look up Dwarven Forge's Descent into Doom, uh, there's a bunch of creators and uh, streamers and all sorts of amazing people. 
it's a huge, awesome list of folks that has been uh, um, participating in this. We were asked um, by Dwarven Forge to participate in this, but then we were also invited alongside um, awesome people like Sirens of the Realms, the Inkwell Society, WebDM, the Broadswords, Venture Maidens, Drunks and Dragons, and Up Up Down Down's rollout are all playing through the the Dungeon of amazing. Doom. Uh, it's a really amazing crew of people, including the group that is in house with Dwarven Forge that plays the first part of it. So uh, all those videos are going up over the next two weeks. So there's lots of cool people to check out as well. Um, and so we will be back April second with our show with the regular episodes of Drakenheim going forward. Wow. What a what a night tonight though that was. We got a lot accomplished. Yeah, yes. I actually feel like this this finally I don't know, I feel relieved. We're not fighting anymore. It's nice. The last I'm gonna say like the last eight sessions have been so tense and I actually I feel like trusting the commander just makes me there's like a sigh of relief right yeah. now. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. A big thank you uh, to our cast, Kelly, Jill, J and Joe, uh, a.k.a. Veo, Sebastian, and Pluto for playing so hard tonight and dealing with the very stressful situation in Drakenheim. And a huge thank you to our stream producer, Kyle, who's running things behind the scenes. Oh, that's hey. the waving arm. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Kyle. Uh, and a big thank you as well to our producer, uh, Clayton, who uh, keeps us under budget. <laughs> <laughs> um thanks again yeah if you guys are enjoying the stream please check out our patreon we actually uh we recently opened a discord that is open right now just to our patrons so you can actually follow the links below or find us at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes and if you become a patron of our show you can chat with the entire cast and crew here including the legendary kyle uh in that discord and you can just have fun asking us a bunch of questions. It's been a really rewarding experience. We're still trying to figure out how we're going to roll that out to a larger audience, but right now it's uh, it's just for the patrons. Yeah, we've been able to do cool chats on Discord, like uh, campaign advice, uh, player advice, like directly, like more of a Q&A style format. So we've helped people like build characters and adjust with the issues in their campaigns. So if you ever wanted to like get our one-on-one -on -one advice, that's kind of the way we've been shaping this up. But then there's also the awesome community of people on Discord that are part of our, our Patreon that have been chiming into those discussions as well. So sure. many fun chats and people yeah. apparently changing popular songs into Drakenheim lyrics. Yes. That was awesome. Yeah. It's another it's been cool, thing. cool stuff. And sharing fan yeah. art too. Fan art. Which you would have seen. Of course, we yeah. also have to thank the sponsor of our episode, Skull Splitter Dice. Uh, they really help uh, help make sure that these episodes are possible as well. Um, if you want to check out Skull Splitter Dice, get a set of these awesome metal dice for yourself that uh, rolled pretty okay for me tonight. I, crit tonight. I managed to make a couple insight checks. They helped me lie my way through this entire yeah. place. So, yep. thanks. I survived because of these um, dice. Check them out at SkullsplitterDice.com and you can use the discount code DDUDES at checkout to save 15% off your order. And finally, check us out on YouTube. If, you have, if you're if you checking out the Dungeon of Doom stuff that we're playing through, we've got all of our videos that we post every Thursday on our channel where we cover everything D&D, &D, including player advice and Dungeon Master advice. You can also find all prior 19 episodes of Dungeons of Dragon High. Is this episode there. 20? This is episode 20. 20! Bang, bang. Yeah. Bang. Uh, tonight's game session featured audio by Tabletop Audio. <laughs> Music. Audio from us, too. We provided audio. I talked. <laughs> and the amazing voiceover in our uh, intro video by 100 Years Boar. That great voice. Thank Ooh. you so much. Ooh, silky smooth. We also had some amazing accessories provided by Axe and Shield. You saw the initiative tracker, and there's also amazing flight stands and other really cool stuff that he sells on his website, so check it out. And we use Terrain by Dwarven Forge and Miniatures by WizKids and Hero Forge. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time in the Dungeons of Drakenheim on April 2nd.